you are now listening to the Danger Tapes Podcast. Hi guys. Welcome to the Danger Tapes Podcast. My name is Devin Ramos, also known as Dev Danger. Before we get started with this podcast featuring David May, I'd like to mention our sponsor, Zay One X Designs. Zay provided the Danger Tapes with an entire website to which I can just dis- uh, display blog roles, uh, a player on the site, which I'm currently learning how to use. Uh, it's on the homepage. Um, sections to which I could display all the podcasts featured on the Danger Tapes network. He's a really great guy to work with. Um, I've known him for a long time, but he provided everything that I possibly needed to get this podcast looking legit, and I appreciate him 110%. If you go to thedangertapes.com or zay1x.com, you will see all his work, his portfolio, and uh, everything he's done for us so far. I highly recommend him. I know there's a lot of pages on um, websites on the internet that'll help you make a legit website, and uh, if you don't know HTML or, you know, Uh, graphic design or anything those are really good but if you want to spend a little bit of money get your shit looking really legit for some from somebody that's gone to school for uh you know web design i highly suggest zay 1x um i couldn't recommend him more also before we go on i'd like to ask that you subscribe to the danger tapes podcast um the danger tapes features the danger tapes network features uh the lost souls podcast terminally trail uh, shoot, Gameology, <laughs> the Rotation Podcast, all of which are uh, new episodes coming mostly every week. We try to bring you new content every week. The Danger Tapes is weekly, and um, by you subscribing, it helps us know that you appreciate everything we've do- been doing so far. It's free for you; it means the world to us. And um, you know, you could comment. You could, you know, whether you listen on iTunes or YouTube or whatever it, it shows us that you appreciate what we're doing so uh subscribe through uh, subscribe through these methods and we'll uh we'll appreciate it and um right now we're going to get into this episode featuring david may i first heard about david may through lifestyle of a dream chaser and i've been a fan ever since uh, i've probably listened to that album lifestyle of a dream chaser countless amount of times uh lately i've been listening to his most recent album titled video 94 and um they're both really dope albums you could download and stream them for free via soundcloud or bandcamp and i highly recommend that you do so um yeah he's just he was a really great dude i've been trying to do this podcast for a really long time and um basically i just decided to call him up via skype and uh we just talked about sound uh everything he's doing to you know work on his craft as an engineer as a sound engineer that is and he talked a little bit about osa one step ahead um also his albums video 94 and what that meant to him and his you know the surrounding area of that liquor store slash video store slash head shop um and yeah it was a really great interview i'm really glad he did it and uh, i'd like to thank him again for doing it i hope you guys really enjoy this episode featuring david may right now we are going to get into a song called uh, Levitating off of Video 94. And at the end of the podcast, we will be going into a song called Never Satisfied, which is off of Lifestyle of a Dream Chaser. Again, you can download and stream those via SoundCloud and Bandcamp. And uh, it's free, so do it. And you can buy a hard copy if you want to as well on Bandcamp. So uh, enjoy this podcast episode featuring David May. Yeah, this is Video 94. Back, you know what I'm saying? Something to smoke to. Go down to Video 94. Grab yourself some switches, some papers, whatever. Light one up for me. Valley Boulevard, even where it turns to hope From there going both ways, 
driving, maintaining the smoke. I drive them no gathers. I hit the corner with the lean. I got homies in Dallas. They know what I mean. Younger smoke by video. Tell them don't burn the shop. I cop a pack of swishes. Hit my favorite burger spot. The kick is combined to make 24 inches of bass. That's 24 inches to crank up till you lose your face. I hit the liquor store for 40s. Probably get stopped by a shorty. Trying to buy brew who don't got profit seniority. I got the little homie long as there ain't cops around. Last thing I need is for them to search my car for the pound. I'm breaking it down. Roll up at my leisure, smoking on two strings, feel like I caught amnesia. You could put up your best Buddha, but it ain't beating neither. My weed on top of it, it's like I'm smoking neither. I move around in my city like a cloud in the wind. In the wind. And you can see the smoke creep its way out from behind the tent. Behind the tent. So if you feel the bass, smell what I play. I might be around. But no matter where this life takes me, I got two feet on the ground. I'm left day. Fuck you mean you never sped while smoking dudes on Amo. Shout out to my homies who came up from Bay. I spent low money on this pack. About to blow dumb in my pack. I take snaps, but I hand out sacks. I'm a candle. Learn till I ain't got wax. My inner circle got killers that you would never know. My clientele includes those that you think will never smoke. You're not a skin. Feel like I'm a lieutenant. Shout out you for the way you're thinking that he presented. Five panel fresh, military fatigues and crew necks. I'm stepping out the cloud of smoke into the convos of who's next. Ready, who's neck at that end dog? I'm down at five out ten dog in the morning. I was up late recording this memoir of a dream chaser. This green paper, my motive. And everybody know it. The hustle always talked about, now everybody show it. Don't even know that down when they swear on their mamas neither. This so I say a down the bottle of the strongest clean. I move around in my city like a cloud in the wind. In the wind. And you can see the smoke creep its way out from behind the tent. Behind the tent. So if you feel the bass, smell what I play. I might be around. But no matter where this life takes me, I got two feet on the ground. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, you know, everything you put out so far has been uh, been like really cool for me. And I've been listening to it a lot, and uh, I, I just started getting into Video ninety four. So oh word, yeah. that's dope, man. What, what, so you see, you see, uh, you like Video ninety four? Yeah, I do, I do. Um, when it came out, like I didn't really get to listen to it a lot because I know it right. came out like a few months ago, and uh, I didn't really get to listen to it too much. But um, I've been finally starting to listen to it like a lot more. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool, man. It's, I really like it. Hey, man, that's awesome, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's dope hearing when people come across stuff later on. Like, not, I mean, it's always awesome to have a dope rollout. But, I mean, when people kind of come onto it later, it just kind of, I don't know, to me, it just kind of says, like, all right, that's, it had a little more, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it lasted a little bit because somehow he came across it. That either meant some people are still talking about it. Or it was noteworthy enough for him in his head to still check it out, like he remembered to. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yeah, to me it was like because uh, it was it was on SoundCloud for like the longest time too. So I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and listen to it. And I guess right. that's that's the cool thing. Like it just kind of just it stays there. And I, I you know I, I always knew it was in the back of my mind because I, I liked uh, lifestyle of a dream chaser. So I was just like, all right, I'm gonna go like, really listen to it. Because the first time I was like, I didn't really have like the proper setup to listen to it. You know, you're listening to it on shitty computer speakers or something so you know i finally gave it the car test it was it's oh Ooh, man that's that's scary i mean like you know i'm confident but I, I i mix and master myself and i'm very meticulous with that stuff you know especially because i went to school like i don't want it to seem like i didn't do my shit you feel me so yeah 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 <laughs> like you got the, <laughs> the c minus or something you know <laughs> yeah dude that shit always worries me i take sometimes i take really long on the mixes just because i'm so you know what I'm saying? So much of a perfectionist. Sometimes it can be detrimental, but I just remind myself that, you know, it's it's something that I, I have an ear for and I just have to trust myself and know that I, you know, I know what I'm doing. It's it's tough, man. I think it's just because I want such an awesome sound, you know, like I see something very specific, like in my head, or I guess I hear it, you know, and that's that's how I want to go for it. But it doesn't always, it's, sometimes it's hard, man, to make that realization. And sometimes I have to end up teaching myself new stuff just to get there. 
Right. Well, I, I mean, that's what I see as far as with you as well, because I think that uh, with you posting your setup, like your setup is like a lot of, I know a lot of people that went to school for, for you know, mastering and for yeah. sound design and stuff like that. But like when you see their setup, it's always like, you know, it, it doesn't really look like they put a lot of effort into making it, you know, a hundred percent. And uh, yours, man, like, like we were talking on Twitter before. Yeah. Where I can see that you're really putting a lot of investment into your sound and everything. Hell yeah, man. You know, like, I've, it's, a, it's a constant process. You know, that was one of the things they, they taught us in school, too. You know, like, they really said, you know, your studio, you're going to start with this, and you're going to take it there. You don't just get it all at once unless you get lucky and, like, just get some dude with tons of capital. Just drop on some studio like that. But, I mean, like, why you? You feel me? You know, it's, it's tough for someone to see that investment. You know, so... You start off building it, invest in the right equipment at the right time, make money off it, you know, then you get your money back, invest in some new shit. And then, you know, as you build up your studio, your rates can go up, your quality can go up, you're going to attract new types of customers, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's it's a hustle. I'm learning more and more about it. I've had some different internships, you know, with different people and they're teaching me how to make it more legit, you know what I'm saying? Because I was, I got my first little inbox when I was in... It was either freshman year, or like going into freshman year, man. Like, I remember I went down to Sam Ash, got like some basic shit. I thought I was hype off the Pro Tools. I had my little computer, a little USB mic, man. Like, shit, shit is so different now. You feel me? Like, yeah. It's it was a process, man. And like, it finally, like, when I got out of school and shit, I decided, you know, take money I had and just invest it in this shit. You know what I mean? And then whatever money I make back, reinvest it. And I, you know, I've already done. I've broke even in that respect, you know what I'm saying? The right. stuff is paid for itself, which is good. So well, I just keep building it up, keep making it, you know, don't be afraid to look for new shit and always improve your shit. Right. Yeah, I, I think, like, again, when I saw your, I use this word way too much, but it, it is, like, really just an organic setup. Like, there's, it doesn't look, and I'm sure you got some digital elements to it, too, but it doesn't look, like, 100% digital, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I really like that. So what, what was that first piece of equipment that you bought that you were just, like, all right, this is a big. This is a big one. You know, I know uh, it's either going to be this or it's it's not going to be right. Man, I, I mean, honestly, the very first purchase was like an actual legitimate power conditioner, bro. Like, because man, I had some some issues. You know what I'm saying with like power surges and shit. And like, I realized one day when it happened, and like the actual the whole like it wasn't just like a circuit breaker. It was something more in depth like the actual wiring like in the like the walls and shit was messed up so that plug went out oh wow yeah and that was like the plug i had all my stuff connected to like through just a regular like power strip you know what i'm saying that you would get at staples oh shit and yeah so the shit just all died and you know i had i had uh, actually like pain kills was here and stuff you know what i mean uh -huh. and the whole session is just dead we didn't get to work on anything because of that and you know i just thought about like man i can't afford that to happen you know especially you know, I got lucky nothing crashed or anything, but your hard drive could crash, your computer could crash, any of that stuff. And that, especially with clients, that, you know, as they get more serious, you know, if you lose that shit, like, they'll flip out. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? And word like that spreads, like, that's the worst thing you can do as an engineer is lose so much shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've had, I mean, my setup, like, I've been, I've been working at it, too, but it, there's, there's times when I just, I lose shit just because, you know, just because of a, a faulty hard drive or you know, exactly. and there's like little things you don't consider, and I imagine like your, your your setup is so much more elaborate than mine. Yeah, man. Like, I'm like I mean, shit. now I got the what's it called the time machine backup on the actual computer, and then I got two external glyphs, you know, with the FireWire on some 7200 RPMs, and then um I got a Dropbox backup as well, so I got the three different ones covered. Um, you know, like I I copped the Dropbox, the the whatever the the Pro Plan or whatever. For more gigs as soon as that shit happened because i was like i'm not trying to lose any files so now i keep whatever active work you know in the dropbox so it's protected and whatnot you know so after i secured everything with a power conditioner you know the next piece of gear i went right away was a lexicon little effects processor a little mx200 uh -huh. you know that does all types of fun stuff man like i started looking at lexicon just for the reverbs i learned about them in school i learned on a different one up on the bigger consoles but you know i knew the brand and the you know, the history with Lexicon and their reverbs they produce. So I really wanted to cop the box. You know, I looked it up, I looked it up and it was it was worth it for the price. You know, it, it gives you your bang for your buck. It's a nice little first step. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, man, because I'm, I'm really into effects and doing what you can to expand the music. Like, 
the vocals are just a piece of the puzzle. You feel me? Like the regular vocal, you got to add stuff to it or space it out or, you know what I mean? Expand upon it. Right, right. Man, that's 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 legit, man. That's like, again, like it, to me, it seems like you're looking for more like consistency with both like quality of sound and even in your music too. Because like going back to Lifestyle of a Dream Chaser, like it was it was a little bit more eclectic as far yeah. as like the, uh, the songs go. But I mean, like it was still dope. But as far as Video ninety four goes, like it was it was a lot more throughout the whole album. Like it functions a lot more just as far as an entire album. You know, the songs flow into one another and it's just consistent yeah man like thanks man like that's that's really what i was trying to go for you know because it was it was the first project that i was coming off um after i had left black cloud you know so i was even kind of confused almost about what to do next you know i was a little nervous like okay this is my first release without that like backing you know what i'm saying like a name backing me like that right you know, because at the time, like when my when uh, Lifestyle of a Dream Chaser dropped, you know, Black Cloud is getting ready to go on tour. You know, Black Cloud, you know, this, we're doing shows with, you know, like my release party. Of, it was with Pac Div, you know what I'm saying, at the Common Ground, Curtis and me. Like mm-hmm. that was that was a, like a peak moment, like a peak little, little time period right there. So it was like awesome, you know. Now here I am, you know, saying things have slowed down. You know, it's not like we have like a nationwide tour about to go on again to you know back up the hype or anything and i'm on my own you know what i'm saying in that sense so it was it was scary man you know what i'm saying and then i got with gunner like let's do something because he's actually uh the newest member of osa uh. and i think at the i think at the time he didn't have anything out or maybe he had one song or something i don't remember mm-hmm. but i really wanted to you know to have him have something out with an osa member just so it was like, all right, he he's in OSA, here's the proof type shit. You know what I mean? Not that people are trying to prove it, but you feel me? Right. Um, and it was just going to be a song, but he sent me a batch of beats. And then I'm, in my head, I just heard a, like I was high at the time, and I heard a little uh, a little tale, a little anecdote to share. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, the, that's where the project came. Store Runs was the first one that was written. And then it kind of just, you know, expanded from there. You know, and Video 94 is my local smoke shop. I've been going there since since high school. Uh-huh. You know, and that's pretty much everyone from right here in my area, you know, Walnut Diamond Bar, like, they've pretty much been there if they smoke weed, right. you know, or they know of it, like, on some secondhand shit. But that's the spot, like, you can get shit for, for the low, and they got pretty much everything you can think of. And if you really hide, they had an arcade back in the day and shit, and they got some, like, all the video rentals, all the, the dirty section in the back, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They sell everything. That shit is wild. So, so they don't, do they still have the sketch. videos? <laughs> what I mean? Do they still have the videos? Yeah, they still got the videos, man. They got all that shit. Like, it's DVDs, but I mean... Well, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the most of their money probably comes from the headshot, though. I'm not going to front. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's dope that it's still open, though. I mean, we still ha- we had, like... Uh, we didn't have a shop like that. I think we had a few, like, liquor stores that were pretty, like... You know, like, people knew about them and stuff. But, uh, I mean, we had a couple of good video stores up here. They had all, like, the rare gems that you could find and shit. But that's dope that you would pay homage to that spot that everybody knows, you know? It's yeah, just... man. Because it was crazy, too. Because I'd be, like, it's crazy. Like, as I told you, I was scared. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And then one of the first things I released was just a little, uh, it was a little screen cap of a promotional video. And it was just, like, a picture of me, like, walking into Video 94. And I said Video 94. And I was like, oh, this is the EP I'm working on, da 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 uh-huh. I got more, like, response than I ever got on any other stuff, like, even a song. Like, in that immediate day, it was just people like, oh, Video 94, oh, yeah, I go there, oh, shit. And I was like, damn, I should start associating my stuff with more localities more, because yeah, yeah. this got a ton of recognition, and people are looking at it like, not only do they see music, they see something that might relate to them, because they've been there, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. they're, they're more prone to check it out, so... It was it was awesome, and then I I found a whole bunch of new you know people that actually fucked with the music at that point. They were either unaware or they just weren't checking for it, or they, you know they figured it was some typical shit. I don't know, you know what I mean. But when they saw that, they gave it a little listen. And it's it's definitely there's more people in the media area that now like actually oh shit you know there's people I went to school with that didn't know I was doing this shit like this. Right. You know what I mean? Like they're oh you're still rapping, and then they heard that like oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and because I was a completely different place than, than I am now, of course. So you know, but it's it's pretty awesome, man. Like video ninety four. What, what what can I say? I would not be in the same place without that's for damn sure. Because that shit is too close to my house. Right. A little two minutes down the street. 
and that shit is enough uh, to get in some fun troubles, you know, some some shenanigans. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you because I'm not 100 percent clear as far as uh, I mean, maybe you guys have made it explicit a little bit more, but I'll, I'll let know as far as OSA. Yeah. One step ahead, like you've, you've done some stuff like as, as a group in Victorville as well. Yep. Um, and uh, but um, as far as OSA goes, like what can you tell me about OSA just like in general? OSA has grown probably since you last heard of it. You know what I'm saying? We've uh, we added more producers, it's not just the we still, you know, the five rappers, but we've added more producers um, in the back. You know, um, gonna uh, like I said, join. Chris Charles, I don't know if you're aware, but he's uh, also part of OSA. Mikey Mays, mm-hmm. yeah, and then uh, that's that's a uh, right there. That's the producers we added, and then there's the five MCs. I'm the engineer. Chris Charles got a studio too, so they record some stuff there. And um, oh, I said Mikey Mays. It's Mikey P. Man, I told you that I fuck up. I'm high and shit. My bad. <laughs> uh, I knew something felt wrong about that. Oh, shout out to both of them now. They're the homies. Um, but <clears throat> as far as that, you know, like right now we're all working on projects. Why did you just drop something? Mm-hmm. Um, live and direct. Uh, live and direct. He dropped that with the Grimster out there in Russia. Uh, you know, the Mar just dropped Vibes. I know Threat just put out the beat tape. Right. Uh, Vince. What, what is Visas going by? We don't know what he's going by. Vince Moore, Visas, a.k.a. You know what I'm saying? He's going to drop something too. He's working on a project, um, and we got we got a show out in San Diego um, on the 13th of September. We're doing a show with Adamo Genesis. Oh shit! You guys just had another show uh, in San Diego too, not too long ago, right? Yeah, that was uh, me and Damar and like Wazu performed too. But nice. this one's actually like gonna be like a OSA show. That's nice. what we're shooting for. Well, that's dope, man. That's dope. I mean, like I, I've been fo- like I've been lightly following OSA. Like most of the time, I just like kind of have you know. You're, yeah. you're basically on my timeline most of the time, and uh, but yeah, like for the most part, like OSA, like it's, it's not something that it hasn't been too familiar to me. But I know like you guys are out there making bigger moves and expanding, so that's that's dope, man. Yeah, man. You know, it's we we did take a little time and just kind of like re- reorganize and you know, like not that we're all extra on some like you know uptight shit like that, but just on we kind of took a step back and reevaluated. All right, how do we approach this? Mm-hmm. And everyone kind of worked on perfecting their craft, you know, like when we kind of like, you know, went, went into a little bit of silence and we came back, like everyone kind of came back with their music and you could see a huge step in growth from their last project. Right. You know what I mean? It was kind of, everyone's going perspectively because we all released our, you know, a project since then. Um, it's about to be a Vincent's turn, Vince Moore, Beezus, whatever he's going by. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, he about to put something out and that's going to be his, you know, here I am again after perfecting my craft. We all did it. You know, we all went away and came back even better. Why He hadn't had a pro- uh, project out in a minute. But, you know, he came back with some dope shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just listened to that last night. Yeah. Listen, I mean, you listen to, to vibes and then you listen to thoughts of a young nigga. Like, the growth is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. the just it's not even just, like, necessarily just, like, lyrical content. Because, you, know, you, you know, the homies been had lyrics. But it's like... There's so much more structured, more as actual like projects, like cohesive, like shit you would listen to. And that shit is that comes with time, that comes with perfecting your craft, that comes with understanding what you're trying to deliver. Right. So you know, like we're taking the time, <clears throat> we're taking the time to perfect shit, but we coming back now. We, you know, we getting our shit together. We when we getting in the studio with each other. You know, we doing what we can. Like it's you know, it's always tough when you have a group to get everyone in one place. So you know, sometimes it takes a little longer. But you know what I'm saying? We working. We getting shit done. We about to have some dope shit for sure. Yeah, well, I'm seeing that, man. And I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys come through with. And, um, you know, like I said, I just listened to Waju's, Waju's project last night. And it was, I was impressed. And I really liked it a lot. And uh, you guys, I'm, I'm really excited for what you guys have coming out are coming out with. Yeah, man. Like, just know everything's, it, like, the time taken is for a reason, man. You know what I'm saying? We all kind of learned earlier on what what can happen if you're just more focused on getting it out and getting it right. Mm. You know, we've all had, you know, various delays now at some point, and that's because we were taking more time to get a certain aspect correct that we wanted. Right. You know, we we didn't settle for the, all right, fuck it, let's just put it out like this. You know, so I think that, like I said, that comes with, you know, even just maturity too. You know, under, like I said, we we've grown up, we've really sad here and we man we talked it out with each other 
You know, there was times where when we talked to each other, we had to keep it extra real. And, you know, sometimes it got a little tense in the room if it did, but if it was it was all for the better because everyone was saying honest shit and we, we come out stronger from it at the end. Right. And that's the realest way to go. Like, if we just have a bunch of yes men here, shit's not going to get done. You know what I'm saying? So I think everyone being able to voice shit to each other and keep it cool and, you know, be understanding and shit. Like, even if it gets you, you know, I might rub you the wrong way because you don't agree with it at first. You understand where it's coming from. These are brothers. We all want the best for each other. And we all know what, what we're capable of and shit. You know, we all got different styles. We know that, you know, so, but we still know how much work we need to be putting in and how much, how serious we need to take things. So it's good to have that. It's, you know, it's kind of like a, like not a security blanket, but it's it's just a little support system. You feel me? Mm. There's always someone to talk to. There's always someone to kind of go over your music with if you want to. It's it's a great it's a great system. Yeah. Well, good shit, man. Um, yeah, that's that's about all I had to ask. Um, so if you ever find yourself in uh, Victorville, you gonna hit Steak and Shake or, or what's the deal? Yeah, man, I love that place. Oh, <laughs> man, that shit is so great. I mean. Keep it G on when I was in tour and shit, and I saw one of those on the East Coast. That's the first time I ever seen that shit, and that's when I had like two combos, bro, in one sitting. I'm yeah. not gonna lie, I just did it because I was like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna eat this again. I wasn't aware there was one in Victorville. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They just, I mean, they just put it, and I, I had it a couple weeks ago. The shakes were good, um, but if you ever find yourself up here, man, let me know. We'll we'll, uh, we'll grab a burger. There's one place you should hit up here, and that's I, I tell everybody about it. And uh, I've had people tell me it's the best burger they ever had. And, like, this you got to tell me, man. Like, you got to tell me. Uh, Apollo. So if you ever find yourself up there, <clears> let me know. And, uh, Hell yeah, yeah man. Man, they got do that. But it's the question, though. Do they got the guacamole? They got the avocado? They What's got up? guacamole. They got bacon. <sighs> they got blue cheese. They got garlic. Spread. They make everything in-house. It's it's uh, even their meat. Like their meat, they grind it up there. Damn, this sounds so tempting. Like, man, I might have to see what's up with a bus that way or some <laughs> shit. I'm a, I'm a little burger connoisseur. I like to try out the different burgers. You know what I'm saying? That's like Ooh. the best as far as like from here to, uh, I think from like here to like where you are, oh. it's that's like a must. Like if you ever find yourself like even passing through, like going to Vegas or something, <laughs> yeah. hit Apollo. Like, Damn. Because it's right off the freeway. Like it'll take you like five minutes to find, maybe 10 minutes. Hit man. Apollo. Oh, man. You just, you make my, my mouth salivate shit. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? I, ain't, I, have, I haven't ate yet. <laughs> Oh man, I'm faded and stuff. Now I got the munchies. That sounds amazing. Damn. <laughs> hey yo, no, I love fresh food, fresh burgers, all that fresh ingredients, man. I mean, I have always been a little burger kid. I'm not gonna front, yeah. but I used to eat the little bullshit burgers. Then I grew up and I was like, I need some some real ingredients. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, this this is this is the real deal, man. This is this is the real deal. Yeah, man. You got to lose the training wheels at some point, huh? You just got to go out there and do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's 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 uh, it's an amazing place. It'll blow your mind. Like it'll, it's really good. Damn, man, Apollo. I'm I'm have to check that out now. You've made it a mission. <laughs> well, all right, man. That's that's about all I had. Again, uh, I, I want to thank you for doing this again. Uh, if, like again, if you ever find yourself up here, just let me know, and we'll uh, we'll get one of these done. Like you know, I got a, I got other mics and shit too. So. Hell yeah, man! That sounds like a plan, bro. We'll I appreciate Kane, you man. having me on and shit. Yeah, this is this has been this has been dope. I've been trying to again. I've been trying to do this for a long time, and um, I'm glad I finally got it done. As far as talking to you and like actually like really talking to you, because like I've never met you in person. It's just mostly all Twitter. So <laughs> yeah, man, I feel you, bro. You know, it's it nice to talk to you too, man. It's good to connect. Well, all right, man. Thank you. That's that's literally all I had. So right now, <laughs> right now we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go out with uh, your song "Never Satisfied." So. <laughs> All right, Michelle, bro. Take care, man. All right, man. Take it easy. <laughs> All right, I always figured if I'm dreaming, might as well think big. What's the point of having dreams that you will never live? I'm tired of the same shit on different days To the point I'm driving to the same places in different ways Living good, but I could be living better I always find a reason to be chasing after cheddar Maybe it's for my folks who stuck around through all the bad weather But it's probably my addiction to making life better An overpriced ride with rims and a bitty riding shoddy Being naughty while I'm switching lanes on my big body I'ma travel the globe just to say I seen it I'ma take a moment to enjoy a route that's more more scenic, I could see it so clear 
that it's bound to happen Only if I take action and do it to my satisfaction It's nothing easy doing shit when I'm my toughest critic I'm too specific with my definition of terrific Growing up is rough when you never had too much Now I want it all, I doubt that I could have enough The feeling of cash will result in you feeling relaxed Are you willing to give your all till your will is collapsed? The dollar bill will make you kill to make a living So watch your back for people trying to take what isn't given If you see me it might appear that I'm the maddest guy But that's only because I'm never truly satisfied I spent my childhood daydreaming A dope job without school but with the pay even I couldn't deal with the scholastic life I wanted to learn something more practical But bad advice led me to self-indulge And more than one vice An addictive personality kept me up on them late nights Whether it was drugs or lacing tracks up on the weekends I was up so much I heard them say that I was tweaking I guess it's hard to sleep when you seek perfection I might never reach it, but I'm always in the right direction They say it's tough living life without some satisfaction But it's just cause I want everything that I've ever imagined Some call it arrogance mixed with a dose of cockiness But cocky is cursing out the Lord during the apocalypse I'm just doing well, but I'm hoping for more I'm tired of not having the money to buy the whole store Growing up is rough when you never had too much Now I want it all, I doubt that I could have enough The feeling of cash will result in you feeling relaxed Are you willing to give your all till your will is collapsed? The dollar bill will make you kill to make a living So watch your back for people trying to take what isn't given If you see me it might appear that I'm the maddest guy But that's only because I'm never truly satisfied It's never enough, it's never enough It's never enough, so I hear from my people It's never enough, so now they kneel down to the steeple It's never enough, so now they will ask for a sequel It's never enough, and it is never equal It's never enough, it's never enough It is never enough